This course covers two kinds of UML interaction diagrams, sequence diagrams and communication diagrams. Communication diagrams are the subject of this and the next several movies. Both kinds of interaction diagram show the communication that occurs among objects or participants in a system or some part of a system. They show the specific messages that pass between participants in an interaction, and they show something about the order in which those messages are sent. While sequence diagrams emphasize time, communication diagrams emphasize the links among objects. Many UML tools will convert sequence diagrams to communication diagrams, and really these two kinds of interaction diagram are semantically equivalent. Later in this section of the course, you'll see a movie that compares sequence diagrams and communication diagrams and makes suggestions about when to use each. But now, let's look at the basics of the communication diagram. By the way, UML1 called this kind of diagram collaboration diagrams, and you may hear them referred to by that name. In UML2, their communication diagrams, and that's what we'll call them throughout this part of the course. Communication diagrams contain three basic elements, objects, links, and messages. And here's an example of an object in a communication diagram. An object represents the different objects that interact with each other in the system. And for communication diagrams, you show the objects using this familiar rectangular classifier box. And you'll notice that the way in which the object is named should also be familiar. We have the name of the object, a colon, and then its class. And just as in other kinds of diagrams, you have some flexibility in how you name the objects in your communication diagram. For example, you might have an anonymous instance of a class and you would write it like that, colon, and the name of the class. Or you can just put the object name without including the class. So that's up to you, whichever information is necessary to your diagram and what you're trying to get across. So in a communication diagram, what these objects are, are the different participants that interact with each other, that send messages to each other within the system. To show the relationship between these objects, use a link, and a link is simply a straight line. These links are sometimes called communication links, and what they show is that the two objects that are connected by the link, that are connected by the straight line, are capable of interacting, are capable of communicating with each other. If there is not a link between two objects, that means they cannot communicate directly with each other. And you'll notice that the links in communication diagrams are identical to association in other types of UML diagrams. Now along the links you put messages and as in a sequence diagram a message shows communication between objects. And as in a sequence diagram, messages are shown by arrows going from the sender to the receiver of the message. So for in this example, along this link, this object can send a message to this object. Notice that you don't name the links, but you do name the messages, or you do show what messages get passed from one object to another. There's really no need to name the links because that would just clutter up your diagram and it's understood that the links are communication links, sort of pathways along which messages can pass. In communication diagrams, because we don't have the element of time running from top to bottom in the diagram, that ne isn't necessarily the case in communication diagrams as it is the case in sequence diagrams. We number the messages and that's how we show the order in which the messages are passed from one object to another. So this would be the first message. If we have a message going from this object to this object ne next, 
that would be the second message, and so on. So you can see here how it's clear both the flow of the messages and the order. The arrow shows the direction and the number shows the order. Uh, communication diagrams are really an extension of object diagrams. And what object diagrams showed you was a picture of the system at a given moment in time. What the communication diagram shows you is that it extends that time. Rather than showing one particular moment, rather than showing just a snapshot, it adds an element of time so that we can see things that happen as time passes and the order in which they happen. So in that sense, communication diagrams take your object diagrams and extend them by adding uh, both the dimension of order and the dimension of time. So communication diagrams extend object diagrams by showing the configuration of objects in the system and then adding to that information about order and information about time.